I wish people could see me for a second. You could take one look at me and tell that I'm not the like just need an affirmation in the morning and I feel great kind of a person. I cringe when I hear those cheesy like, yeah, like smile today. I'm like, what? No, everything sucks right now. What are you talking about? Smile today. I'm going through something like everyone has that part of them that thinks, you know, I wish you wouldn't just tell me to feel better. I wish that you would kind of validate that something is difficult and then I'll listen to you. Welcome to another episode of the Lively Last Podcast. We are James and Lisa Duvall, and we're so glad that you're listening to the show. We hope that you're finding value each week from the guests and conversations that are taking place. Our goal is to introduce you to men and women who are intentionally living their lives in a way to create a positive influence in their world. We desire that each episode encourage and inspire you to live your best life. So last week we said that we would be talking about the Enneagram on this episode. Well, that's not happening. Life happened and we were not able to get the episode completed. So we will be bringing that to you in the next few weeks or so. But we are excited about today's guest. Johnny Crowder is a really cool guy. He created a really powerful tool called Cope Notes, which we think you will find very interesting. Thank you all for having grace for us in a season that we knew that we couldn't do it with quality and that we wanted to do it right. So I'm excited about this week's episode. It seems like every week I'm meeting with different individuals who are dealing with anxiety and stress. So I think the way this tool works is pretty exciting. Yeah. So before we begin the conversation with Johnny, I want to give something away. So there's a new social media app called Clubhouse. It's a unique platform because it's all audio to audio interaction. I have found it to be a great learning platform. You can get into conversations with people with like interests to learn best practices. It's also a really cool networking platform. The catch is the app is currently in beta, so you have to be invited onto the platform, and it is for iPhone users only. Here's the giveaway. Lisa and I have seven invites that we want to give to your listeners. So the first seven people to direct message us at Lively Last Podcast on Instagram or Facebook with the word Clubhouse will each receive an invite to get on Clubhouse. I think it's ironic that you have seven invites because your Enneagram 8 Wing 7 yeah, is shining go. bright right now because you love... It's experiences. I, I want to invite everybody to be a part of it. it is, it's a little extra for you, but anyway. As you mentioned, today's guest is the founder and CEO of Cope Notes, a text-based mental health platform that provides daily support to users in nearly 100 countries across the globe. It's pretty cool. Johnny Crowder is a 28-year-old suicide abuse survivor, TEDx speaker, touring musician, mental health and sobriety advocate. Johnny has a psychology degree from the University of Central Florida and a full decade of peer support and advocacy through National Alliance on Mental Illness. He is also a lead singer of the alternative metal band Prison. We know you will get a lot out of this conversation, so let's get started. Johnny, welcome to the podcast, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. I've been looking forward to this time with you and just excited about it. Yeah, I'm definitely pumped. I'm pumped to meet a fellow Floridian. Not many podcasters I have run into are down here. People don't understand not only what it's like to be a podcaster, but people don't understand what it's like to live in Florida. It is a weird, weird place. There's so many distractions to actually keep you from doing something like podcasting. You can be on beach or whatever, but love it. And I'm excited about hearing your story. You know, I told you, I think you're one of the most interesting people that I've had the opportunity to interview on the podcast, because if people jumped on your social media feeds or followed you a little bit, they would kind of go, well, what's this guy all about? Because I mean, you're tatted up, you're in a death metal rock band, you're also CEO of a company. But you're also incredibly smart and you have a story that is really powerful. So just to start our conversation, if you could just share your story that's brought you to where you are at this point. First of all, thank you for the kind words. And second of all, there's never a way to answer questions like this. Like, what's <laughs> your story? Honestly, the Cliff Notes version is I grew up in an abusive household, drugs and alcohol in the home. I made several attempts on my life. I lived with a number of diagnoses, primarily bipolar one, PTSD, 
schizophrenia, OCD, and I was in treatment for years. I went to school for psychology. I started doing peer support and public advocacy in 2011. I started leading support groups in the mid 2010s. And then I started a company that I did not know would become Cope Notes in like 2017. Cope Notes was launched in 2018. And now I am the kid who went from feeling pain to doing everything within his power to alleviate that pain for other people. And it's cool because growing up, I never thought my life would get any easier. And now as an adult, I'm still thinking about my younger self. Like, what can I do for people who feel like that? You know, because I remember. I went on and watched your TEDx talk. I think you did TEDx Eustis, if I remember. And mm-hmm. it's a it's a powerful video. And I encourage all our listeners to go check it out. But you share on there the journey of trying to help yourself a little bit with sticky notes that actually led to your company, Cope Notes. Can you talk a little bit about that process, some things you learned of trying to just encourage yourself that actually has led into this great company that you're leading now? I don't know. I wish people could see me for a second. You could take one look at me and tell that I'm not the like, just need an affirmation in the morning and I feel great kind of a person. I cringe when I hear those cheesy like, yeah, like smile today. I'm like, what? No, everything sucks right now. What are you talking about? Smile today. I'm going through something like everyone has that part of them that thinks, you know, I wish you wouldn't just tell me to feel better. I wish that you would kind of validate that something is difficult and then I'll listen to you. And when I was trying to focus on changing my thinking for a long time, I wouldn't even admit to myself that my negative thinking was a problem. I would think I'm just being real, man. I'm just looking, I'm just telling you how it is. Everything sucks. And I wasn't aware that my perspective was having a really negative impact on my mental health. That was already not great, mind you. I already had a lot of issues. And so in an effort to start changing the way that I thought, I was looking around for like positive affirmation stuff. And I'm like, ugh, they are all terrible I don't like, I don't even like the idea of having to use positive affirmations. I'm like, I want real tangible stuff. I want to like, I want to do an exercise or something. I want a journaling prompt that I, or I want like a perspective shift thing that I can really chew on and dig into. Or I I want a psychology fact that I can sort of camp out on and try to internalize those coffee mugs with a positive saying on them or whatever that did nothing for me. I needed whatever the next step was, but I needed it to interrupt my life. So like I say in the TED Talk, I would leave notes for myself in my own language, very casual, informal, conversational, and just stick them like in my shoes and in cups in the cupboard and inside of books and stuff. I was trying to surprise myself, but much like you can't tickle yourself, it's pretty difficult to surprise yourself. (laughs) Yeah. You mentioned on the TEDx talk about habituation Can you just share a little bit about that for listeners to understand why surprising yourself was so important? So I went to school for psych, something that I totally paid no attention to at the time and then came full circle to being super important later in my life was the idea of habituation, which is basically the fact that your brain can decide that something isn't important enough to relay to your conscious mind. So your brain can say, "Mm, I would tell you that your refrigerator is making a sound, but you've already heard that sound so much. I don't want to bother you with that information. You already know it. So I'll just deal with it on the back end. That's what happens when you set a timer on your phone to go off at two o'clock every day that says, be grateful for something. Mm -hmm. After a while, you start ignoring it. Even I'm going to call myself out how I learned this in my real life. I downloaded the Bible app and I set the notification thing to pop up at 2 p.m. every day with the Bible verse. Yeah. And I downloaded the app. I set the timer and I would go through my notifications and realize, wow, I've ignored the past five days worth of notifications and it wasn't conscious. I didn't think, ugh, Bible, no thanks. Yeah. My brain just decided, oh, you see that every day at two o'clock. It's not that important. So how did that lead into what is now Cope Notes? I wanted to make those interruptions, like I mentioned, and I wanted to provide those like exercises and encouragement, psychology facts and stuff. But I knew that I wanted it to be random enough to where your brain could never see it coming or else the full impact of the text would never be realized. Actually, the first version of Cope Notes was very rudimentary. It was just me picking random times to send text messages. But eventually we had to make a more sophisticated system that now we 
we use artificial randomization to make sure that no two people ever get the same text at the same time wow. that you don't get, you know, I got a text at nine Oh three today. And then tomorrow I get a text at nine 15. It's basically the same time. We try to differentiate it a lot so that when you get your cope notes text, hopefully you had no idea it was going to show up. That's cool. So when you started Cope Notes, you said it was not as automated, but today it is. I'm, I'm wondering, do you get stories from people who are like, man, that note showed up at just the right time? Yeah, that is the coolest thing I've learned so far is the fact that the brain can kind of assign value and meaning as it sees fit. So we use randomization. That's like the way that we distribute these text messages. So I don't know crap about you. So I can't send you the right relevant text at the right relevant time. Even if you told me everything about your life, I would have to be with you 24 seven to know when you needed to hear a certain thing. Because we have a randomization system, people are just responding saying, how did you know I needed this? Oh man, this came at the exact right minute of my day. Or even stuff has come in to my text inbox because I'm a subscriber to Cope Notes and I will receive a text that mentions groceries when I'm in a grocery store. I'm like, how on earth of thousands of messages of all of the infinity days and times that I could have received a text? How is this happening? And that stuff happens to users all over. Only my example was innocuous, but for other people, they get a text about grief while they're visiting their parents' grave. Wow. Or they get a text that mentions frustration when they are at, about to go into a boxing class or thinking about signing up for Taekwondo or something. It's like, you wouldn't believe the stories. At a certain point, it sounds like they're made up, but I've experienced it enough times to know that it's true. That's amazing. So basically on Cope Notes, every day a subscriber gets a random text. Is that correct? Yeah. And the goal is for you to never know when we will text you or what that text will say. But over time, really what we're doing is training the brain to adopt newer, healthier coping strategies and think in healthier thought patterns over time. One of the things I, I like about what you offer is you actually offer gift subscriptions. And I would assume that there are a lot of parents or family members, friends who have family members or you know people there in their life that are struggling with anxiety, depression, other mental health issues that giving a subscription like that is really a powerful way to step into that journey, right? Yeah, whenever I talk about gift subscriptions, I think of my mom and she wanted to help when I was growing up, but it was a really complex situation and I just think like imagine if my mom texted me every day. Oh my word, I would ignore those texts. I would block her number and it had nothing to do with her, it's just I didn't want to hear from my mom every Every day. And this is kind of a way for people to say to a friend or family member, listen, I want to support you, but I don't want to blow you up. I don't want to be all up in your business and your personal life. I know you probably don't want to hear from your mom or your dad or, or your sister every single day. So this is a way for me to contribute to you feeling better on a daily basis for you having that support without me actually having to like dig into your business, you know? That's so cool. Can people give a gift subscription anonymously? So like if I wanted to give one to a family member, would they know that I gave it or text messages just start showing up in their inbox? You could personalize it. So sometimes someone will put like Papa Bear or something and it's like from from Papa Bear. Funny but, that you say that because that's what my daughter calls me as Papa Bear. Really? Yeah. So yeah, that, that is something that people will put in there. But all, the default is someone who cares. That's so cool. if you don't want to put your name in, it'll say someone who cares just gifted you a Cope Note subscription or whatever it says. So we want to encourage people. Yes, you can give to people and personalize it and let them know that you were thinking of them if it's for a birthday or whatever, Christmas. But we want to make sure that you could maybe give a subscription to a coworker yeah. or someone kind of covertly without them feeling like, you know, I don't know that person like that. Why would they do that for me? You know? So Cope Notes is obviously a great tool for individuals and for family members. What other ways do you see Cope Notes being used? I know this might surprise people who have seen me in person or photos of me, but yes, the government and school districts will work with a guy with a face tattoo. Um, <laughs> 
Cope Notes serves all kinds of folks. We do employee wellness. So we'll work with employers to provide this as like a perk or a benefit for wellness. We do student wellness. So we partner directly with school districts or individual schools, universities. And then lately we've been doing a lot more government work. So partnering with states and counties to provide this as a resource, even down to individual nonprofits. So if anyone is listening who has a good idea for someone that we can hit up or potentially partner with, please let me know because at the end of the day in mental health, it's a network of care. Yeah. So there is no one magical pill or solution that's going to fix everything. Every provider, every agency, every county, every nonprofit is bringing something different to the table. So instead of Cope Notes trying to be a cure-all, we're saying, how can we bring what we do to come alongside what you do, whether it's a, like I said, county, nonprofit, agency, school, whatever, and support because we know we can't do your job, but we also know you can't do ours. So let's team up. That's so good. Lisa and I work in the church and we have a lot of staff members and a lot of young staff. And I just know that the opportunity that we have to encourage to help young leaders deal with anxiety, deal with the challenge of stress of adulting well and managing life and managing work is such an opportunity. So I would assume that there are so many different companies and different opportunities, government school, you said that would be great opportunities. So yeah, I would echo what you said. If people are listening and they have some ideas, they should definitely hit up Cope Notes as an opportunity to invest in their employees and their teams. Heck yes. I'm out here. Hit me up, Johnny at CopeNotes.com. Yeah, it's a cool tool. And I'm going to put all the information about Cope Notes in the show notes so our listeners can go and check it out. And I'd really encourage if you're listening today that you know somebody in your life or you yourself just need encouragement every day. This is a great, great tool to do that. Okay, Johnny, I want to turn the corner to another part of your life. You are also a touring musician with a death metal band, correct? All we came to do is make noise. So I used to be in a band called Dark Sermon, and that was blackened death metal for all of you genre nerds out there. Now Prison, the band that I'm in now, is a lot more... It's like new metal, alternative metal, or just plain metal. It's a lot more listenable, I'll say that. It's actually really cool. I mean, I got to be honest, I, I've listened to a lot of your songs. and Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't completely understand all the things, but I went and Googled all the lyrics. I love the positive message that you guys are putting into your lyrics and you're actually using music as a platform, right? Oh, a hundred percent. I think music is a platform, whether you want it to be or not, you know, we'll tour with bands that will get on stage and they'll say, you know, kick somebody in the head, like light this place on fire. And I think, man, if you are on stage with a microphone and people are going to listen to you, you're going to have an impact whether you want to or not. So you better be really careful what you say into that microphone because kids will get that tattooed on them, you know? And you guys deal with a lot of kind of taboo topics in your lyrics of your songs. How did you guys decide to use your lyrics for some of those tough topics? The real question is, how did you get your bandmates to allow you to write music (laughs) like that? And it's just that I've been doing advocacy for a decade. So when I started working with these guys, I didn't have a big sit down like, hey, listen, are you guys cool with me writing about this? They knew. By the time we started working together, they're like, this guy is going to write about about sobriety and consent and self-harm. And that's just the kind of things he's going to write about. So I'm very fortunate to work with a band that understood my heart for advocacy and ministry before we even started writing together. So it's never been an issue, fortunately. That's so cool. So are you guys still touring? I mean, obviously with COVID and so forth, things have kind of shut down, but are you you recording? What's what's the future plans for prison? We're normally on tour for about half the year. Obviously with COVID, we cannot do that. So in the meantime, we are just writing and recording and we're trying to conserve energy. Like instead of trying to figure out how we can do music right now and do live stream concerts, we're like, why don't we just try to write some of the best music we've ever written so that when concerts come back, we can go out and play it. So our focus has just shifted from being a live band to being a studio band. And then once tours open back up again, we will have lots of great music to share with people. That's so cool. Well, this has been awesome. I I wonder if I could just take a few minutes and just ask you some random questions that have nothing to do with Cope Notes or prison recovery, but just have to do with just some crazy fun stuff about Johnny. I am ready. Okay. We call this Would You Rather. So I have five Would You Rather questions. Some were kind of off the wall. Some were a little bit more serious. So we'll start with this one. Would you rather go to space 
race on the next mission or compete on your favorite game show for a chance to win millions? Oh, go to space for sure. Really? Even if no it's not million, concept. but millions, it's plural. Oh, you can, you can have a hundred million dollars and not go to space. Okay. Like, come on. Okay. That's cool. Well, you may have a chance. I mean, now it's SpaceX and everything going up. It's not too long until <laughs> we're all going to be going to space. Yeah. Well, that's the contingency. I'll say, hold on. <laughs> if, that, if this takes place in a world where you can buy space travel, then maybe I'll take the money. But okay, because then, then you oh. can actually win the millions and then go buy your trip to space. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's here's another one. Would you rather eat only Chick-fil-A or KFC? Chick-fil-A for sure, because I have only had KFC a couple of times. And I don't think I've ever had good KFC. Maybe I've just been to the wrong ones. You, you've only had KFC a couple of times in your whole lifetime? Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. I thought that was it's like very, this stuff. Well, here's the thing. I only eat out on tour normally. Okay. Like I only eat fast food on tour. And KFCs are rarely open after a show is over. <laughs> I guess that's true. Like we're stopping for food at one in the morning, two in the morning. So if it's not open, we're not eating there. So yeah. I've eaten out like a bajillion times and I've only been to KFC like thrice okay. maybe. I'd have to choose Chick-fil-A too because my youngest daughter works there. So I have to support her, <laughs> her livelihood. Okay. Here's a music question for you. Would you rather make a record that sells five? hundred thousand copies or make a record that influences five thousand other bands or artists it's got to be the second one okay the first one is so alluring because you get that like feeling of satisfaction but the second one you might never get the feeling of satisfaction right like you might not get that tangible number but you made a cultural impact which is why you wanted that feeling of satisfaction in the first place. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's always cool when you hear a band like, oh yeah, they were influenced by this band. So, mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, here's another one for you. Would you rather be stuck on an elevator or a Ferris wheel for 24 hours? That's terrible. I guess an elevator because there's more space, but I like the Ferris wheel thing because it's open above you. Yeah. Have you ever been stuck in the elevator? No, I'd probably choose elevator because you can't lay down in a Ferris wheel, can you? I'll I'll tell you what, this last year I got stuck in an elevator and it was just a three-story building, but I was stuck in it for like an hour and it was miserable because cell phone service didn't work. Nobody knew I was in there. It was bad. So I, I don't know. That's a tough one. Okay. One more here for you. Would you rather see all the wonders of the world or meet 10 inspiring people before you die? Oh, no. That's really tough. I mean, I know I'm pretty inspiring, so you could count me as one of the 10, but... Dude, dude <laughs> probably probably people, though. Yeah. Like, I love this planet. I'm fascinated by nature, but people are truly the most interesting things on this planet, at least to me. That's cool. That's cool. Well, Johnny, this has been really great. If listeners wanted to learn more about you, where would you send them online? If you go to copenotes.com, you won't just find the CopeNote subscriptions. You'll find a link to our podcast. You'll find my TEDx talk is on the about page. You will find a contact form that you can fill out if you have questions for me. So probably copenotes.com is your best bet. If you're like a social media type person, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, and on Instagram, my handle is at Johnny Crowder loves you because I do. That's awesome. And I would just encourage everybody to follow you on Instagram because you have some incredible pics. And recently you had one with a pretty sweet looking car too. Oh, yes. One day. You got to dream big. (laughs) Well, I really appreciate your time. I look forward to following your journey. And I'm excited about just seeing how Cope Notes continues to impact people's lives. And I know I'm going to be gifting some subscriptions myself as well. Hopefully we can do this again down the road sometime. Heck yes. Thank you so much for having me, man. I'm trying to come down to West Palm soon. Yeah, man. And if a prison's ever playing on the East Coast of Florida, or if you're over here, let me know. We'll, We'll hook up for a meal. Maybe I'll take a KFC. Yeah, show me the way. <laughs> no, we I'm won't do that. Educated. Show we me the won't way. do that for sure. Take care, man. All right, brother. I learned about the concept of habituation through my psychology degree. The diminishing of a psychological or emotional response to a frequently repeated stimulus. I think that this is why you do not flinch or respond when I play practical jokes on you or try to scare you. That's probably true. Yeah. So 
Thanks again, Johnny, for doing what you're doing. Yeah. Seriously, one of the best times having that conversation with Johnny. So thank you for your time. If you found this episode helpful, why not share it with a friend or family member that could benefit from it as well? You can find the show notes to this and every show at www.liveleadlast.com. And you can text the word live to the number 22454 to have new episodes, show notes, bonus content, and exclusive offers delivered directly to your inbox each week. We want to invite you to join our Facebook group at facebook.com backslash groups backslash live lead last. We've also started a YouTube channel where you can listen to podcast episodes as well. So check that out. Remember, if you want one of those invites to Clubhouse, direct message us on Instagram or Facebook. We have seven available, first come, first serve. Thanks again for joining us for this episode. We encourage you to lead your life and leverage your influence today in a way that leaves the legacy you want for tomorrow. Until next week, bye-bye.